Ashman Elevate My Faith, and today we are on week five of the Women in the Bible series, so we're halfway through, which is crazy, but today we'll be going over Deborah and Jael, I feel like I don't say her name right, but um, I just combined them together because they're both in the same chapter, and Yell's only in it for just a little section, so um, to get ready for this week, we just need to read Judges 4 and 5, so take some time to read that, and we'll get right into the questions. So the first question is, who was Deborah? And I put a prophetess and a judge of Israel. And she was the only woman judge of Israel, which is cool. Um, so that's all I put for her. So add on to that if you'd like. So the next question is a bit of a long one, but it is, Eve chose foolishness while living in a perfect, sinless world, but Deborah chose wisdom while living in a chaotic, sinful world. Do you have any wise women in your life you need to listen to? Do you have any foolish woman in your life that you need to stop listening to or have better boundaries with? Is she influencing you or are you influencing her? I'm also going to go over some of the fools and wise definitions to give you a better idea to what that means and like what to look for in women in that so you can kind of have an idea. So for fools, they ignore advice, reject correction, do not fear the Lord, deceive themselves, reckless confidence, short-tempered, no heart for learning, quarreling, ruined by own foolishness, then blame God, and led astray by drinking. And for the wise, they tune ears towards wisdom, not impressed by themselves, fear the Lord, joyful, good judgment, listen to instruction, humble, words are wise, kind, and bring healing. And these traits are all referenced from Proverbs. So I'm not going to get too into this with my uh, answers because it's a pretty personal question and you're pretty much like kind of calling out people in your life. Um, but I definitely have some family members that I feel like are foolish because I definitely know they're not walking in with Christ. So they have very worldly views. So I have to be careful and have boundaries with those people um, because even though they are family, I still have to have boundaries because if they're, yeah, I have to influence them, not them influence me. And if they're going to influence me with worldly ways, that's not good. So I'm trying my best to have those healthy boundaries and to be that light in their life and hopefully they'll eventually like, you know, want to come to Christ and just from seeing how I'm living and how God's been working in my life. But until then, I definitely just try to have those boundaries with those people. And for wise women, I definitely have some mentors at my church that I really love going to and just uh, seeing like their wisdom about things and how they handle situations and give me advice. I just know they're a good wise counsel to go to when I'm stuck um, on something and need that like you know, outside perspective or advice. So I definitely listen to them when I can. Um, but someone said to be careful because there looks like there could be wise women at, at church and then like they're not always saying the best things or doing the best things. And I know no one's perfect, but I definitely agree with the one girl in my group that said that you still have to be careful um, and why it's always still important to put God above everyone else too. And then some girls were just talking about being in the wor word is important so you're not influenced by the worldly people and holding each other accountable as like uh, brothers and sisters in our faith. That's so important because we can get qu quick to like uh, worry about offending them, you know, and not wanting to hurt their feelings. But it is important to have that accountability and that's why we should be in community so we can hold each other accountable and not just be this fun, cutesy social group, but actually trying to grow together in Christ, like through Bible studying, praying, worshiping, and just telling each other our struggles and, and what we need prayed over and, and counsel with. Um, so yeah, that accountability is very important for sure too. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next question, which was who was Jael? And I just put wife of he Heber the Kenite. Hopefully I'm saying these Old Testament names right. But um, that's really all I have about on her because she's in such a little small section of the, you know, Judges 4. But her section really comes out with a bang for this uh, part of the story. Um, so the next question is, Jael fulfilled Deborah's prophecy of the Lord's victory over Caesarea being at the hands of a woman. When was there a time you had to act boldly in the name of the Lord or times you know you should have but not reach that point yet? Um, so me and the girls definitely talked about this. Uh, we wish we were a bit more bold with like maybe strangers in public, you know, when they're like swearing or using the Lord's name in vain we should just be like hey that's not cool to use the Lord's name in vain and, and stuff like that I've definitely kind of felt that conviction because that happened at a grocery store and the guy was like saying some words and to his grandson and and like but of course it's like so hard to be bold in those situations but that's when you really have to lean on the Lord and 
see if he's calling into that situation to address it as like lovingly and you know kindly as you can <laughs> with like angry people <laughs> and then we even just kind of talked about our friends again too because we were too you know you're too afraid to offend them if they're doing something that's not really biblical or if they're swearing or drinking too much at a party i know one girl was saying she just wishes she was said something but then she felt bad because she had a drink so it's like how can i say to not get crazy drinking if i'm drinking but so it is like a really hard balance to have with um drinking and stuff but i think it's still okay to address it if we feel like someone is taking it a little too far and for me i also know i just need to act boldly by proclaiming you know the word of god to people and not being scared to you know preach the gospel because we all are called to do it even if we're shy or introverted like i am so i definitely struggle with that but i definitely need to just lean on the lord and ask for prayers on that um because yeah even a guy at my one small group was telling me that um like he just asked god to give him the words and then he kind of like blacks out and doesn't know what he said and then the people are like oh that was so great what you said and he's like what did i even say i just like came out of me so I have to keep that in mind, like the Lord will give us those words we need to speak um, when we are afraid we are not going to handle it well or say the right things wherever. We just got to lean on that Lord and the Spirit will take over and, and just say what's got to be said to these people. Well, that's all I have for today's section. I know it wasn't very long, um, but a lot was jam-packed into Judges 4 for sure. And uh, so yeah, just really meditate on the scripture and just really think over these questions, especially about the wise women and foolish women. I think it's important to really reflect on who's in our lives and if they're influencing us or if we're influencing them. Are we listening to the wise women? Are we having boundaries with the foolish women? It's very important. So definitely take some time to reflect on that for sure. But um, thank you guys so much for checking out this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.